Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Stephen McCoy, and you are listening to Session Fit Stephen. I thank you all for tuning in today. We have a special guest, Shakari Christie Lee. Shakari is the daughter of Jackie Christie from VH1 Basketball Wise. So for those who doesn't know, Shakari's son, the grandson of Jackie Christie, was burnt at his daycare. And since then, there has been a lot of controversy around this whole thing, and, and she's actually here to speak to us about it. Sakari. Hi. Uh, hi, how are you? I am good. How are you doing? I am really good. So happy to have you here on the show. Um, I'm happy to be here. I mean, it's been so much going on in the media, and I'm glad that you come to me to talk to me all about it. So you yeah. have your tell-all book that's coming out. Uh, do you have a title of it yet? So um, my book is based on my testimony, and the title of the book is Light to Her Shadow. Mm. Growing up and just some of the experiences and things I've dealt with, um, I've always kind of just felt like a shell. You know, I didn't feel like I was a person of substance or anything, you know. Uh, I've always been a shadow, you know, in my own mind. You know, I didn't think people could remember who I was or anything. Um, And I'm opening myself up. I'm revealing who I am, not only to people that don't know me, but to people that do. I'm I'm putting a light to the shadow of who I am and just revealing myself. I, I just think it's so courageous of you to be able to be brave enough to tell your story. Right. I know very early on in your life you wrote your first suicide note. What drove you to that point? Just a constant feeling of turmoil and, you know, um, low self-esteem, you know, I wasn't, I didn't find any kind of relief in, in the stress that I felt like I was under all the time, you know. Um, I've, I've kind of, in my mind, I, I'm a burden, you know, and maybe uh, if I'm not here, it'll be easier, you know. And as a young girl, I really believed that. Um, so that kind of what, and at, at 11, you know, you just kind of, my mind was everywhere, you know, I just know what I felt in my heart, and it was a constant, um, that feeling that I, that wouldn't go away, you know. So that's why it was just like it seems like the only way to go. Um, yeah. That's kind of what what led. It wasn't like a cry for attention type thing. It was really the deep, deep what I felt in my heart. Now I know your mom recently did an interview and she spoke about you having bipolar. Uh, right. Now is that true? I've never been clinically diagnosed with mm-hmm. anything. Um, my mom has had me sing, um, to see, you know, because I, I was very vocal in the fact that I believed that I was depressed, you know, um, that I felt like I was suicidal on a number of occasions in my life. Um, most of the time it was kind of brushed under as like, you know, oh, just a cry for attention type thing. I knew what I felt, but once she felt the need to do something, um, probably more extreme than what needed to be done. The doctors never have agreed with, you know, anything that she's ever said. You know, there's, there's nothing wrong with this child, you know. She may need someone to talk to, but that's it. They have never diagnosed me with anything at all. Well, I have to also ask about the Benica drink. Now, she mentioned that the Benica drink was a, a drink that everyone in the family drink. Oh, I did um, So the only people that I can stay drunk vinegar in the home with mm-hmm. myself and Doug. Um, Doug did it as, you know, him being an athlete is supposed to cleanse your system or whatever, you know, a part yeah. of his uh, diet type thing. Um, no one else could stand the taste of it, you know. I was, I had no choice. Besides, you know, it was, I was required to have three vinegars a day and do my workout. Daily, like three, you know? three glasses a day? Yeah, so we would get... Uh, water bottles, and they would pour, you know, probably about uh, halfway out or a little more than halfway out, or a little less than halfway out, and then throw the rest up with vinegar, and then you drink it. So did your sister have to drink it as well, or? No, it was just me and Doug who drank it. I mean, it was, it was you know, something like my mom, they were like, oh, I don't know how you guys could stand it, you know. Uh, me and Doug were the only two that, that I ever witnessed having to drink it. I mean, she would suggest it to other people. They were really, um, my parents were really into the brag 
franchise, so they would push it or, you know, tell people about it. But I, myself and Doug were the only people in the home that I, I know drink it. Now, considering that it wasn't that drink, it was something you didn't like the taste at all of it and and your sister didn't have to drink it, did that kind of affect the relationship between you and your sister? Like, did somehow you kind of gotten upset with her because, you had to do certain things that she didn't? You know, I, I I used to wonder, you know, like, how come I didn't feel that way? Like, I've never felt like a blame towards Chantel, towards anything, you know, like me having to work out while she's watching TV, you know, and I'm running on a treadmill, and obviously I don't want to be doing this, you know, and I want to be sitting there watching TV too, you know, but right. um, I never looked at it like, you know, like, oh, I, just can't. And I never could. A lot of it, it caused resentment towards my mom more than anything. I, I I didn't take it out on anyone else. You know, it just kind of what I've already felt, it just kind of confirmed it more in a sense. And, oh, my God, I have to go back a little bit. How is your son? How oh, is he son, doing? He is doing really good. He's getting big, too big. Mm-hmm. But... <laughs> but is he walking around? Is he smiling? Is he laughing? Is yeah, running the household, telling us all what we're gonna do. He learned how to say no, and so he's you know in charge. So he is he's wonderful. He's doing very well. That's really good. I'm I'm really happy to hear that. And um, the GoFundMe account did uh, did that help at all? It did. It helped take care of the bills that we needed to take care of, like it was meant to do. And there was money put away for Jackson and everything, like you know, because it would it would obviously more than what we asked for. You know, the outpour once it became viral was way beyond our belief. You know, um, so it definitely was it was helpful. It did not go towards any illegal anything. Like you know, I we're not those kind of people, but you know. <laughs> Yeah. Now, the GoFundMe account wasn't created by you, correct? No, it was created by my cousin. Um, oh. I, I was in the hospital, you know. I, I'm telling you, I, I don't even remember how many days I had in that hospital. But at some point, she did call me. I, I gave permission for it to be made, yes. She did ask me, you know, well, you know, Carly, you're not going to be able to go back to work right now, so what are you guys going to do, you know? We weren't sure. Obviously, I'm going to be taking care of the kids, their dad was working, but we're trying to figure out, you know, like, this emergency situation just came out of nowhere. What are we going to do? And they asked, do you think it's okay if we start one? You know, and I said, yeah, that's fine. Never could have imagined all of this would have happened afterwards. Right. Now, is this your cousin that's on your mom's side or your dad's side? Yes. On my oh, mom's wow. wow. Her mother and my mother are sisters. Her oh, mother wow. has passed, passed on, but... Yeah, they were sisters. I have the relationship with you and Doug been okay growing up, or have you always felt distant? Um, that, yeah, Doug's always. I mean, he's a a good man. You know, like I can't. I don't have anything bad to say about Doug at all. You know, he's a good person. I mean, he yeah. he's quiet, reserved, and um, I, I what I can say is we were all kind of distant. You know, Doug was kind of kept away from everybody. You know, um, mm-hmm. he's the trophy on the top of the shelf. You know, we weren't we're messing with that. So I, I, I don't. He, I, he did what he was told. Is what I will say. You know, that's it. <laughs> now, after watching this season, have you tuned into this season of Basketball Live? I watched a few of the episodes. Um, the one mm-hmm. sometimes I catch a rerun because you know, some, oh my gosh, you know they were talking about you, blah blah blah. Right. But, Otherwise, I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but I did watch a couple episodes. Right. Now, watching it this season and seeing them speak about you and your life and them arguing over, oh, I helped your child, I did this. Like, I just wonder, after watching the show, did you ever feel with Evelyn donating the money to you? Was there ulterior motive there? What are your thoughts now after watching the show? Well, I appreciate that question to be able to clear this up. Um, I don't personally on my own self, but there was 480-something people that donated, um, including someone else that, you know, knows of the family or whatnot. So I I can't say that I felt she did something to, to you know, attack or to hurt 
a harmed situation. As my mom said before, Evelyn didn't know me before this, you know. she did, I don't know what she knew about relationships. As we know, a few seasons ago, my sister came on the show or whatever and had things to say. But mm-hmm. I can't say, like, you know, but I don't know. My interpretation of the whole situation never would have crossed my mind. I'm shocked. And in my opinion, of all the girls, Evelyn would have been the one. I, I mean, like, I know you have my back, and I don't even know you. You know, for you to reach out and help my family and not even know us, you know, like, you might be the friend I need, you know, but that right. would be my my interpretation. Now, after everyone found out about your story, because you sent her an advanced copy of your book, so other yeah. cast members have the opportunity to read your book. Since then, has any other cast member actually reach out to you? No, and I don't reach out to them or try to make, you know, like I'm not trying to make friends out of them or, you know, um, make this a bit of war type thing or whatever. Obviously, just pieces of the book or, you know, was shown on the, on the show or edited. I don't know what all they read. Um, but I haven't reached out and they haven't reached out to me at all in any sense. Well, your mom actually posted a video of, I believe it was a clip that of a show that she produced years ago and you were little your little sister your sister was little as well it showed a beautiful family sitting at the dinner table and is that how you remember life or like when you looked at that clip how did that make you feel uh and that this is not in a way to down talk anything or anybody um we didn't eat dinner together you know um it was we didn't not even holidays, you know, Thanksgiving wasn't traditional how the family all sits down together, you know. Um, so that was definitely and it wasn't their show, I believe it was a um a wedding special that they did and we just did what we were told, you know. We weren't gonna yeah. we, were, we weren't kids to go against the grain. Me and my sister were very, you know, well mannered children and when it came to our parents, you know, when we did interact with them or deal with them, we were on our P's and Q's most definitely. Is there any, because uh, what your mom always say is that it seems to be a back and forth. You you will speak publicly and tell people about how horrible of a mom she was, but you'll go back to her and tell her, oh, I don't know why these people are saying these things. Now, is that true? That sounds to me like she's saying that I'm not the person on here saying anything. And and what I do want to say is I, I'm not going around saying what a horrible. Like I said, I've never called her a bad mom. I've never. I'm sharing experiences. This is a a simple part of my life, you know. Your truth, um, right? Right, right. And this is with my mom and me being, even being in the same place with only a certain amount of time, you know. So this is just one part of the book. Um. To me, that sounds like, you know, her saying, like, I'm saying, I'm not the person doing that. You know, who who's on my page, you know, who will be posting pictures of my kids? And I have heard that before. She's called me, and somebody's on Twitter, and they're saying they're going to write a book. You know, like, it's my picture right next to, you know, the comment about the book. Like, you know who the person is, but you're not yeah. going to say, like, you know. So I don't know why, why that's being said. The last interaction that I did have she posted for us, you know, like, mm-hmm. that's the last time I spoke to her. I, I I don't, and we haven't discussed this, you know. My mom was speaking to me for a little bit, and we haven't discussed the book, or, you mm-hmm. know, she never said anything about it, so. Now, has I, she ever apologized to you? You know, uh, I received a call uh, earlier this year, and she was upset about something, I don't know, something that they had filmed, I'm not sure, but uh, she kind of, it's just like, you know, I, I, I'm i sorry for whatever, you know, you guys feel like I did or whatever. And and I told her, you know, I appreciate that most definitely. Um, and, and I don't want nobody, I don't want you to feel bad. Like I said, I'm not saying I'm shaming you for anything, you know. Like I'm just saying this is how I felt, you know. And, and you don't have to acknowledge it anymore because I have accepted it and I have gone on from it, you know. Mm-hmm. But... You know, I don't want her to feel bad. Like, I don't want her to be somewhere crying about this. You know, like, that hurt right. my heart. Right. So, you know, of course I forgive. I I appreciate you acknowledging it. I don't yeah. know if she necessarily knows what I mean, and I hope she gets that from the book. But I went out of my way to make sure that it was done in a respectful manner. Although she's against the book, 
I yeah. took her into consideration with it. I love that. Hey, I, I yeah. really hope that you both can mend your relationship as okay. mother and daughter because you know you only have one mother. Right. And, yeah. um, and, you know, I know it's been a difficult road, but that's from, from my show. I really, the reason why I have this show is because I really, really like to see people mend and right. repair and if, if, it's, if it's possible. And it is possible. I'm it sure is. I remember Malaysia saying on the reunion that some people, well, she was referring to your mother that she just loved a different yeah. way. It's not up to us to right. tell to tell other people how to love us. You grew up very spoiled, right? Is that I mean, that's something that was said that you grew up very spoiled. She made sure that you guys had everything. It just she wasn't there physically a lot because she was always out working. Um, we had clothes, shoes, home. That you know, like that was definitely there. Um, I don't know what the spoil like is if we were just you know running around buying stuff, doing it, like that. Mm-hmm. You'd have to read the books to kind of get an insight right, on how right, our right. actual right. lifestyle was. But mm-hmm. um, I think the important thing is we the bonds that were made. You know. Um, yeah. My, she deserved our respect most definitely because she's our mother. She'll yeah. always have that. But then, you know, the bond, you know, it's, that was something that had to be formed that wasn't, you know. Mm-hmm. But, again, like I said, it's not it's not a bad thing. I mean, it, it's done, you know. Now we're going to yeah. go with the future. And like you said, it, people do love differently, and that's what I had to accept, you know. This is the way she loved, and I'm going to accept it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna harbor myself anymore with uh, you know painful thoughts or you know if it is what it is. If, if she wants to call me, she knows that I'm gonna answer the phone and I'm gonna be as happy and respectful as I can be. I've never answered the phone and why are you calling me? Like I'm not that type of person. You know, she knows she's not gonna get an attitude. She never does from me. Yeah, because that's what the impression that I got while listening to her speak about. I thought that because of the past that you kind of shut her out of coming to see your grand her grandson and and everything um but that isn't true so that's the point in my book we have a choice i could have let all of this stuff make me be that bitter person and i could have turned and tried to use my kids against her and all types of you know that was an option but that's not me it's not what i want that's bitterness in my heart I don't have to have that. You know, like I said, I've accepted and forgiven the situation, so it's not something I want to exert energy in to do anything right. to, you know. Right. So yeah. I'm go- I'm not, my heart's not there. So you have, when my kids had cell phones and everything, you know, you have their phone number, I'm, call them. You don't have to call me to talk to you, you know. Um, I'm not that type of person. I'm as open with each and everybody. Like I said, the past is the past. You can call me today and we never have to speak about yesterday, you know. That's just how it is with me. My heart's pure. I don't have any hate. I don't have any any reason to go after anybody. Now I'm just relieved, relieving myself and I'm showing anybody that's going through anything similar. And I receive hundreds of messages a day mm. from people like, you know, oh, my gosh, I can relate so much. So, you know, I'm in this situation. How do I do, you know? Choose to be better. We don't have to be better. That's all there is to it. Yeah. And I was going to ask, what would you like for those people to leave when they close that book? Right. What is the feeling that you would like them to leave with? I want them to be motivated. I want them to feel like, you know what, it's possible. I can do this. You know, I'm stuck in this situation trying to figure this out right now. Or I've been through this and I had that going on. I have a choice to take my life and do what I want to do with it. Happiness, whatever it is, you know. I want them to be motivated. There are silent voices everywhere, and I just want to speak up for us all. And hopefully after me, there will be many more to come. You know, your testimony is, man, that's a beautiful thing. And it's nothing to be ashamed of, you know. And it's something that we should all share because so many people can relate and you'll be shocked. I'm shocked how many people can relate to me. Right, because at one point you start feeling like, is it just me? <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. as an 11-year-old girl, you know, you can't imagine. You know, I 
you had so m- I had so many thoughts, you know. Um, I hope anyone that can read will pick the book up and they'll go ahead and read it. And like like I said, they'll be motivated. There is a choice. Please pick the better choice. Just don't be bitter. Whatever it is that's been done, it's been done, and you survive for a reason. Mm, I love it. Please, can you give us the date of when the book is going to be released? Yes, definitely. August 31st. Lights to her shadow. Thank you so much for coming on to the show, and I really appreciate you as a guest. I just feel like it's so powerful to stand up and to tell your story, and the pain in the story itself is just overwhelming, but I think it's so much beauty in it because you're choosing to stand strong and not be bitter, as you said, and to just accept it and to to move on and go on with life, and you don't have right. to look back, you know. So I appreciate you, Takari. Most definitely. I appreciate you guys having me. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a nice girl, right, guys? I mean, I'm just so happy that she actually chose a positive route and decided to write a book rather than go with her suicide note in, in her life. That's really, really serious, and I hope that if if there's anybody that is listening to the show that has or having those thoughts, you should most definitely contact the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. That's that 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255, and it's available 24 hours every day. You never know what surprises life can bring you if you keep putting one feet in front of the other. You never know. So find someone to talk to, and and if you don't have anybody to talk to, then just write down your thoughts, and you never know. You may have a book like Takari. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to comment. And let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any questions, you can email me at AskStephenMcCoy at gmail.com. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at StephenMcCoy. And you can tweet me on Twitter, StephenMcCoyB. And Sessions with Stephen is on iTunes and Google Play. So be sure to subscribe. Thank you guys so much. Hey, subscribe now.